Welcome back to today's Bible study. I'm your speaker, JT O'Malley 9681. And this time, we are going to go through a study that teaches us to walk by faith and not by sight. As a reminder, you'll hear other words and, and even phrases that may come out of my mouth. It has nothing to do with a heritage of Jewish or anything like that or people need to do what I do and say say things how I say them and there's nothing like that. It is all a personal devotion between God, Elohim, and myself. Elohim, that's Hebrew, for the title God. God is a title, not a name. What it is is a personal devotion between God and myself. So go ahead and pause this video at your leisure and give yourselves a word of prayer before we get started. Okay, the title is pretty much specifically what it says in the second letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth in chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. That's the title. So I have a little bit here. We will start in the second letter to the church of Corinth. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so life is hard, but is not impossible in Yahshua, Jesus. Compared to the Shamaim, the heavens, Afflictions are petty trifles. So you think that the afflictions that we have upon this earth are so can be so great? Well, you compare that. You compare all of those to what we will have when we go up into the Shamayim. The treasures that we will receive, those are what will be massive. And of all of the afflictions, even what may seem to be such great affliction, even being martyred, death. They are petty trifles compared to what treasures await us in heaven. All right, still in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. All right, in this passage, this is another one of those things that I have a per that I just have a personal devotion, devotional uh, disagreement with the person with the person who wrote this in the King James version. And in most other versions would have God here. Well, God is a title, not a name, so it would be Elohim. I personally do not like to say Elohim is a he because Elohim is not a an individual. Elohim is a title to a deity. So what I assume that this is talking about here is that it should be now he that wrought us for the self same thing is Yahuwah, the Father, who also has given unto us the earnest of the Ruach, the Spirit. And with Spirit here being capitalized, that's referring to the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. And so what this is saying is that Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, is the down payment for us. It is indeed a down payment. And you can only get that by giving yourself and committing yourself to Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Also in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is verse 6 through 8. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from 
Aldonai, when it has the Lord and only the first letter L is capitalized, that's talking about Yahshua, Jesus. And Yahshua, you can also refer to him as the Adon or Aldonai. Aldonai is what we would call Lord of Lords. And uh, the Adon, you could call him, call that the Son, but besides the Son is the rightful heir. And Jesus is the rightful heir. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Adon, with Adonai. And so Elohim, God, has given us confidence that we will be with Yahshua, Jesus, when our time in our flesh is up and we will receive a new body. Now with me putting a new body in the notes there, the new body will not happen until the time that those of us who are true to the Lord Jesus Christ will be in heaven during the seven year tribulation. That's when we will receive our new bodies. So those who would be there before us will not have a new body until that time. So when you become absent from your from your physical body and you're in, pre and you're in the presence of Yahshua up in the Shamayim and the seven year tribulation has not began yet and, it, and, and the rapture hasn't happened yet, it is only the Ruach of you that will be there until the time when everyone who goes up will receive a new body. That is why the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's what that refers to. Still in the second letter to the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And Elohim is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. And so Elohim, God, always blesses us to be provided for every single day you keep your faith in in elohim and you always pray to elohim to provide you for what you need every single day and that you keep that faith and trust that you know that god will do so there will be some things that may seem to be scarce but god elohim will provide the thing is we do not need to have anything within us that expects God to provide us with what we want. If it's not what God knows we need, then God may not even want us to have it because it's not going to bring any kind of glory to the kingdom. So why would God want us to have it? Because God knows it's not gonna be worth it for us. If it's not gonna be worth be worth it for glory, for, hit, for the, the glory of the kingdom and the glory for the Father, then it's not worth it for us. And that's something I've had to really learn to accept and get myself away from the ways of the world because what we want to do, what we believe is best for us to take care of ourselves first is never worth it because there's always gonna be something that will mess it up. Now, we will go to the Gospel of John that was written by the uh, disciple, Apostle John. In chapter 14, verse one through three, this is the talk that Jesus, Yahshua, to all of his disciples after the communion at the end of the pa their Passover meal. And Yeshua said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Elohim, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you may be also. Many times as this has been preached, and people do not understand the true meaning behind it of why it's preached all the time. People want to believe that it's just some kind of saying or something. No, it's a true thing. That Yahshua, Jesus, is coming back to take us with him. He is preparing a place to have us all to himself. Now, the letter that James, that was one of the half-brothers of Yahshua, who Joseph was actually his father, but, the, but pretty much the stepfather to Yahshua, 
Jesus. In chapter 1, verse 2 through 4, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And so, when facing troubled times, see it as a time to put our faith in Elohim, God, to take care of the trouble. Be patient and allow Elohim, God, to work for you. And now this is going to be the final stretch. We will go to the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Hebrews in chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahuwah, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And so faith is what holds the, our spirits, you know, our ruachs, or however ruach is supposed to be said in, in, as, in plural. In Hebrew, I really don't know how, how you're supposed to say it. So I'm probably butchering that. But faith is what holds our spirits or ghosts together and helps us understand the truth of the scriptures against the flesh world. All those who are true to Yahshua, no matter how much we know or how much we don't know, it holds us all together. That's going to be it for this one, folks. I hope you all have learned something. I hope this has been some good education for you. There's no telling how much more time we have, folks. And with how things are looking, it's one thing I know for sure that God has put within all of us, even those who do not accept Yahshua in their hearts. God still put it in them as well. Which is why there are those who... They could even be atheists, but are trying to be patriots to their to their country with what's going on, like especially in Australia and China right now. It's the, it's the worst in those areas right now. And the United States is not too much better at all because the United States is, is getting there. Canada has been getting there. There is so much tyranny that people do not see it. They are completely brainwashed by it. And if there's one thing that I know that God has put into every single one of us, and there is a way that you can do it without being sinful, is to never bow down to the will of tyrants. And all of this tyranny that they're trying to, that the world's governments are trying to throw at all of us and force us to get this COVID shot and, and wear a mask and everything else, and all this other garbage, critical race theory and all this other crap, they want us to bow down to the will of tyrants because they are actually, they believe that they are actually gaining from it and in the end, it's all going to amount to nothing. So they have already received their rewards in full. But God has put it in to people. Even if you're not born again, you still have it within you to not bow down to the will of tyrants. And that is why I do not wear a mask when I go out. I only wear a mask in certain places that, that still recommend at least and be respectful about it. If they try to force it on me and, and everything, then I'll turn around and walk away and won't wear it. And I will tell them that they should be ashamed of themselves for, 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 their, for using such tyranny because that's the will of tyrants is to, is to force people to do things to gain control and power and literally to do it through fear that's the will of tyrants and God has put it within us to not bow down to that that is why Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the book of Daniel they did not bow down to the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar put up that was that was to the for them to bow down to the will, to his will of tyrants and they were not going to do it now when it comes to this covid shot 
this coronavirus shot, I still will not take it. There are only two conditions that will make me go against my word on that. One, if Elohim tells me to take it and does not give me a reason why, then I will take it. Or if I get if I catch COVID and God tells me to take the shot, then I'll take it. But just because the world's governments are using the will of tyrants just to get people to take it, I will not do that. I refuse to do that. So those people who view, have viewed this video, I urge you to go to a solitary place, a place by yourself, and speak with Jesus. Speak with Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, to really help piece things together for you and see the truth so that you will know the truth and I pray that the light will shine enough on you that you will make the right decision and allow Jesus in your life to be the f to be first and foremost in your life. So if anybody has any questions or prayer requests, you can leave them in the comment section. But you can follow me on social media. I have links in the video description. I'll be willing. I'll have another Bible study up. I don't know when. I don't know what's going to be yet. We'll just have to wait and see what God wants. But until then, stay safe. Shalom, my friends. And I bear this Bible study in the name of thy son, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen.